Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. So in this video we're going to pick up from where we were previously with the base floor class and we're going to start looking at inheritance this time. So we've already kind of talked about base classes quite a lot. Uh, we've got our game mode base, we've got the player base, things like that. Um, and I did say that we would touch on this in a lot more depth and this is going to be that video. So we're now going to make sense of why we have uh, what we're calling the parent classes are going to be the base classes and then child classes of these. So if you've not covered or looked at inheritance before, this is going to be really useful, I think. Uh, and it's a really, really powerful concept to get your head around and implement where possible. And not necessarily where possible, but where it's preferable to use. And that's something that you kind of pick up with experience as you go along. So to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to go back in to the BP underscore floor base. So there's a couple of things that I just want to keep for now, but we will be getting rid of these. And that's the variables that we had. Now, these variables came from the kind of debug code that I showed you before we uh, dropped it all into our BP underscore scrolling component. But they have another use as well. So with inheritance, basically what it is, is that you're going to have a parent class, which is what the base class is, and any logic or variables that you have inside of that class will be available to the child class. Now it's actually really easy to find out what a parent class of something is. So the parent class of our floor base is actually a standard actor. And we know that because when we created it, we created it of type actor. And all that really means is that if we went into this and open the code for what an actor class is, which would actually in this case require to go into the C++ classes. So I'll just get that loaded quickly to run through that with you. So what we have here is this is an actor class. And basically all of this is then contained inside of our floor class as well, the base floor, floor class will inherit all of these variables and functions. And of course the, the, valuable thing about this it means we don't have to uh, for, for classes which share a very common kind of use case uh, we don't need to include all of these things and rewrite them into every new class that we make so i'm just going to get rid of that for now so what we're going to do is we're going to come back out again we're going to go back to the floors folder and to create a child class or something you simply right click on the blueprint and create child blueprint class now i'm going to call this one we'll start something uh, with something simple which will be the middle floor so this is going to be the one that the player is moving along and we'll call this one BP underscore floor middle. Okay, so we've got the centerpiece of our floor now. So if we go into this and just have a look at what may be different or what's changed. So the first thing we can notice is that we already have the default scene route, the static mesh component, which is already filled with a cube and the scrolling component. Now you can also see that all of these have the word inherited next to them. And that basically means that they're included in the parent class. So we can't get rid of these. The only way that we could get rid of these if we absolutely decided we didn't want them would be to go to the parent class, remove that, hit compile, go back, and we can see that the scrolling component is now gone. Uh, of course we do want that, so I'm gonna keep that in just control Z to get that back. And we can see it reappears. Now, what isn't always quite as clear is down under the variables, uh, it seems as though we don't have any variables at the moment, but in fact, we do. If we go to the event graph, uh, and this is the only reason I kept these, is that we can type in the movement speed. Uh, sorry, it was just a movement vector, wasn't it? So we've got get movement. Now, get movement is a call to the variable in the parent class. So if we were still doing all of the movement and everything on the parent floor class, uh, then that would also filter down to the child class and we could get those values and use them as needed. Okay, so that shows that we can get things like components and variables. We can also get functions from parent classes. Probably won't need to do that uh, for the floors at least, but it works in a very similar way. So if we make a function inside of our parent class, and I'm just going to call this one test with an uppercase E, and we'll hit compile. We'll go back over. Again, the functions don't appear, but we do have this option here to override something. Now you can't override a function in a child class as another function, uh, but if we find our weirdly spelt test, if we click on that under the overrides, we get to override this in a custom event. Now the important thing here is that when we do this, if we had something like a print string just here, so just do a simple print string called hello, when we override this, this isn't going to call the function inside of the parent class. This will do its very own thing. Now what you might want sometimes is you might want to say with uh, movement, you might want the standard movement to happen in the same way that it's happening in the parent class, but maybe you want to add some jerkiness or something in between, um, or a different multiplier to the speed. What you'd want to do to get this, uh, we want to test whether this function will show. And to do that, of course, we need to go back into the floor base quickly. And if we move out back into the event graph and just do this on begin play, I'm just gonna call the test function. So I've just called test. And of course, if we press play, we're gonna get a print string up here saying hello. Now, if we remove the base class and we drag in the middle class, 
we press play, we're not going to get that same print string because although it's inheriting everything from the parent class, uh, we're overriding this in the middle floor component. We're overriding this. So it's doing its complete own thing. Now, if we want that to do the same thing as the parent class and also do its own thing, then what we can do is we can right click on the node. We'll add a call to the parent function first, and we need to plug that in. So now what this means is that when we hit play, it's going to call hello. So first of all, it's basically finding that it's overriding this. So on event begin play, it's been told to call this because again, we're doing a call to the parents begin play. So it's going to do the same functionality as in the parent class. And then what we can add on this is let's say another print string and we'll just add the word child on this. So we'll say child hello. So now what we can see is we're going to get the parents hello and then the child's hello. So this is how we can get the functionality, uh, which may be a universal thing that all floors need to do. Plus we can add a little bit on top of that specifically for what the child class wants to do. So I'm going to get rid of these now. Uh, we don't need these functions. Um, we don't need this function here either. So I'll just get rid of the test function and the call to it on event begin play. Now that's one thing that tends to be quite useful is to remember that most of the time in the child classes, uh, it will come by default with a call to the parent begin play and the uh, parent construction script because a lot of the times the initialization that you set up on the parent classes do need to be accounted for as well. Uh, it's only under very kind of specific circumstances that you'd want to get rid of those so I tend to leave those in and as you get used to working with inheritance uh, you'll know as and when you want to remove those. So the other thing we can go and remove now because we're not going to be using any of these references this is all accounted for in the scrolling component as I've just gotten rid of the variables uh, we can hit compile on that. The floor middle is actually not really going to be doing very much at all, but I've got the class available in case we did want to add any kind of interesting functionality to this. So I'm going to save the middle floor and I'm just going to go back to the floor folder one more time, right click on this. And again, we'll create another child blueprint class. I'm going to call this one BP underscore floor side. Um, I'm just going and double check again, everything is as we want. And I'm going to leave it as its own video, but the next thing we're going to do is add the actual functionality to the side floors. Uh, these will be slightly different to the middle floors. And in fact, I'll just pop up an example just to remind you what we're going to be doing. So the middle floors in the template I've made are just these plain gray floors. And then the side floors, what we're going to be doing is looking at instance static meshes. So each of these are just randomly spawning a block of cubes at random points. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing. So this is where we're going to have some kind of unique logic and functionality inside of the side floor actor. Uh, it's going to be quite simple. It's all going to be run on the construction script so that we get a, a completely random uh, set of cubes and locations on the uh, the start and the reinitialization of the cubes as we uh, reuse them and bring them into the world. Uh, so that's how we're getting this effect. It just looks kind of interesting, I guess. Uh, and it's going to be a good way to show that we can use the same base class for two different classes at the very least, uh, all of which will have the standard static mesh, which is going to be the floor, uh, the scrolling component and the sync component. And then on the side floor, we also have this box and the instant static mesh for the visual component as well. Okay, so I just wanted to focus this video more on the inheritance and the class structure that we'll be following though, because we're going to use this a couple of other times as well. We'll move on to the side floor next time and looking at a random generation of the instant static meshes. Uh, I'll leave that video here for now though. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or found these useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.